Welcome to session four of the Daniel Plan series. Today we're going to be focusing on the essential of focus. It's one of my very favorites. We'll be starting out with Pastor Rick laying the biblical inspiration, which comes from Romans 12 too. It's you'll be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Dr. Daniel Amon will then come in with some great practical tips and motivations of how our thought life can really radically change the way our actions are day by day. He has tips, motivations, and things that we can include. And as you launch now into this session, you can be welcomed by a few friends that have actually seen this play out in their lives. And I hope you gain from it and that it's a great time together as a group. So sit back, relax, and enjoy our time together. For me, um, the thing that brought me to the Daniel Plan was depression. And in depression, it's really hard to focus. Uh, it's, just, it's just difficult to keep your thoughts in one place in a linear fashion. Being able to really focus at a job, learn new things was very difficult. I got into Daniel Plan after my wife and I had already kind of started being concerned about our, uh, our health and just our weight. If you're unhealthy, uh, you, you don't, I don't think you can truly fulfill God's purpose for why we're here. It's not necessarily about losing weight or looking a certain way. Um, it's more about feeling healthy, making healthy choices so that you can follow the plan that God has for you. People of any level should be involved in the Daniel Plan because there's so many people who are new who don't know how to get started and you can be their motivation. And if you're new and need that motivation, there's plenty of people in the Daniel Plan that can help you along. I started to get encouraged by some of the things that I was reading that as I was eating better and as I was having more energy, maybe to get up in the morning and do it in the morning instead of doing it at night because I felt too lethargic in the morning or I didn't sleep very well. I found focus through the Daniel Plan through just consistency and following what it said and um, and just the results that, that came from that. For the guy that uh, he's afraid to do it, geez, I wish I could talk to each and every one of them and tell them you can do it. And if you don't do it, you're missing out on God's best for you. Absolutely missing out. It's the biggest test of faith to believe that God has something more for you, and he does. The question is, are you willing to believe Hi everybody, welcome back to The Daniel Plan. Now in this session, I'm gonna be sharing some important principles about the Daniel Plan essential we call focus. We're gonna talk about how we can focus our minds and on healthy thoughts and on healthy intentions so we can avoid the negative distractions and stay on track with God's plan for our lives. Now the Bible talks about focus and redeeming the time in Ephesians 5.16, it says this, Redeem the time. In other words, that means make the most of your time, for the days are evil. How do you do that? How do you redeem the time? Well, let me give you a couple of ways. First, you've got to make a plan. You have to clarify what matters in your life, what's important. Then you calculate how much time it's going to take to do that. Then you put it on the calendar, because until it gets on the calendar, it's just a dream, it's just a wish, it's just a desire. But when you get it on a calendar, and you know how much time it's going to take, now you're going to move forward. That's focus. But there's one more step you must absolutely take. You got to tell somebody about your goal. You must tell somebody about your commitment. Did you know that when you share your goal with somebody else and you commit to reporting to that person about your progress, you have a 95% chance of achieving it. Without another person in your life, it's not likely to happen. People ask me all the time, how do you juggle so many things at once? Well, I'm organized and I prioritize and I plan and I know what matters. And I don't worry about the stuff that doesn't get done because I couldn't possibly get it all done. But I just make sure that what matters most gets done. That's called focus or another word we use for it is being purpose driven. Now the second thing you have to do to redeem the time is to be ruthless with distractions. Be ruthless with distractions. These are little detours that want to get you off from your goal in life. You know, I love to garden. In fact, I, I grow all kinds of fruits and vegetables in my backyard. I have fruit trees. And this last year when my peach tree bloomed, it was literally loaded with peaches. Every branch had literally hundreds of, of peaches growing on almost every single inch. Now, a branch of a tree might have 100 peaches on it. You might think that's a good thing. No, that's a bad thing. If you have 100 peaches on a branch, they're all going to be about that big. They're little tiny. So you know what I had to do? I had to go through and by hand 
pull off about two-thirds of those little peaches and throw them away. You say, you threw away little peaches? Yes, I did. Why? Because if you want big fruit, you got to throw away a lot of the excess so that the tree can concentrate its energies on creating great fruit. The fewer the peaches, the bigger the peaches are going to be. Does that make sense? Now, distractions are like little peaches. If you have too many of them, nothing's going to grow to its full potential. Now, what does the Bible have to say about focus? Well, it has a lot to say, but the verse I want us to focus on is Romans 12, verse 2. It says this, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Now, he's talking about the way the world thinks, the way the world uh, establishes its values. He says, don't care about the way the world thinks. Don't care about the world's values. But he says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, think about this a minute. He says, don't be conformed, but be transformed. And how is our life transformed? Everybody wants to change. Everybody wants to improve. Everybody wants to be better. How am I transformed? The Bible says, by the renewing of your mind. Now, why does it, God start with the renewing of your mind? Because whatever gets your attention gets you. God is saying, you've got to stop focusing on all the things you don't want, and you've got to start focusing on what you do want. You've got to stop focusing on what's bad for you, and you've got to start focusing on what's good for you. You've got to stop focusing on what everybody else wants you to do, and you've got to start focusing on one thing, what God wants you to do, living for an audience of one. Change is always a choice. Nobody can force you to change. I can't talk you into change. You won't change until you decide that you actually want to change. So let me ask you a very frank question. What's it going to take to motivate you to change? Think about that. From unhealth to health. If you don't make changes now, what will happen to you in the days ahead, in the future, in the years ahead? What will you be faced with? Will you be able to live the life God has planned for you? Again, Romans 12 says this, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world. That's their habits. And you would agree with me that a lot of the thinking in the world is unhealthy. Don't copy their, their habits, but let God transform you. How? Again, by changing the way you think letting him change your brain, letting him change your mind, letting him change your thoughts. Do you know what that word transform is in the original Greek? It is the word in Greek, metamorphosis. Now, you know what a metamorphosis is. Remember from biology class in school, it's what a caterpillar goes through to become a butterfly. It is a total change. It's not an improvement. It is a radical change. A caterpillar is in no way like a butterfly. And God says, let God turn you from a butterfly, from a caterpillar, into a butterfly. Let him transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Now, let me, let, let me just say this as clearly as I can say it. If you change your brain, you can change your life. If you change the way you think, you're going to change the way you feel and act. Most of us are wasting first-class energy on second-class causes. We don't know the difference between what's urgent and what's important. The urgent is almost never the most important thing in your life. In fact, what's most important in your life is the stuff that's easiest to set aside. So the secret to an effective life is focus. Don't try to do 50 things that you dabble in. Know what's more important and do those things that are most important, and don't worry that you didn't get everything done. Now, goals focus your energy. So if you want to live a focused life, you're going to have to set some goals. Do you ever get to the end of the day and go, where did all my time go? Well, the reason why your time went different places is because you were unfocused. You didn't keep a clear goal in your mind. Now, what is a goal? Well, it's more than a dream. A goal is a dream with a deadline. Until you have a date, a deadline, uh, then it's not a goal. A goal says by the end of this month, by the end of this year, by the end of this week, I'm going to have this job. I'm going to weigh this amount. 
I'm going to be this strong. I'm going to have read this number of books. It's very specific. It's very measurable. And it's timely. Long-term goals keep you from being discouraged by short-term setbacks. Everybody has setbacks. I have setbacks in my life every single day. I've had setbacks in my life with the Daniel plan. And I deal with tough stuff every single day of my life. You have to have a long-term goal. And if you get that goal and you focus on it, then those short-term setbacks aren't going to slow you down and certainly aren't going to stop you. So how do you make goals that honor God and set you up for success in the different areas of your life? Well, you begin by having the right motivation. You see, when you figure out why you do what you do, God shows you how. In fact, let me just say this. The why always determines the how long. If you don't know why you're going to do, with, do something, you're not going to stick with it. And when you're discouraged to stop anything, you need to go back and ask yourself, why did I start this in the first place? The why always determines the how long. The Bible says this in Galatians 5.16, and I love it in the message paraphrase. My counsel is this. Live freely, animated and motivated by God's Spirit. Then you won't feed the compulsions of selfishness. Circle that phrase, motivated by God's Spirit. Did you know that God gives you the motivation to do He wants you to do? the things he wants you to do? If you ask him to, he will. He gives you not just the, the power to do it, but the Bible says he will also give you the desire to do it. Have you ever asked God, God, give me the desire to get healthy? If you haven't, why don't you do that? The motivation to do God's will will actually come from God himself. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and by his eternal grace by his grace, gave us eternal encouragement and good hope. May he encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. That would include getting healthy. Did you hear that? God wants to give eternal encouragement and good hope. That's what I call motivation. He's going to encourage your heart and he's going to strengthen you on a daily basis. He'll give you that daily motivation if you just ask him to give it to you. I love what the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For it is God who works in you both to will and to act according to his good purpose. God promises to give you the power and the strength to will and to act, to remain faithful in the commitments you make. And the Bible says this, God did not give us a spirit of timidity, fear or timidity. Instead, he gives us a spirit of, of power and of love and of self-discipline. Did you hear that one? Did you know that self-discipline actually comes from God? God's spirit gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Self-control actually comes from giving God control of your life. Let me say that again. Self-control comes from actually, actually giving God control of my life. And the more I give control of my life to God and the more I surrender to him, the more self-control he gives me. When I'm mastered by the master, I'm mastered by nothing else. Mastered by the master, I become the master of everything else. But if I'm not mastered by the master, anything else can master me. In other words, if you don't let God be God in your life, something else will become God in your life. It may be job, it may be food, it may be sex, it may be the opinions of others, and that's called an idol. Now look at this next verse. Ephesians 3.16 says, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he, that's God, will give you mighty inner strength through his Holy Spirit. Circle the word unlimited. God's power for you is unlimited. He's never going to get tired. You're going to get tired of doing the right thing, but God never gets tired. God never gives up. So out of his unlimited resources, he will give you the strength to keep going, doing the right things you know to do, even when you stumble. And he'll give you the strength to get up and continue. How does that happen? 
Well, it happens by coming to God every day and by making a declaration of dependence, not independence, a declaration of dependence, where I ask God to give me the strength to do his will and to do it his way and to do it in his timing and to do it for his glory. That's my prayer for you. My prayer for you is that you will remain connected to God through his word and that you will focus your life, just like Romans 12, 2 says, not conform, but transform by the renewing of your mind, and that you will welcome the transformation God has in store for you. Now, today in this session, we're going to hear from another of my good friends, Dr. Daniel Amen, one of the founding doctors of the Daniel Plan with me and an internationally recognized expert in brain health. Daniel's going to share some practical tips that will help you strengthen and focus your mind. But first, let me pray for you. Would you bow your heads? In fact, why don't you say this prayer with me? Just as I pray it, you say, God, me too. Dear God, I commit my journey to health as an act of worship. Like the Bible says, I want to offer my body and my mind as a living sacrifice acceptable to you. God, I want nothing more than to be a good steward of my thoughts and then my feelings and then my actions. So, dear God, I, I commit to living a more focused life. And I want to begin by reading your word every day. So my mind will be filled with your truth, not conformed to the world, but conformed to the word. So that your promises, everything that you've said in your word can become true in my life. God, I give you my mind, and I commit my focus to you. And as I focus on you, help me to focus on the things that matter most in life and to not worry about the rest. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week, everybody. As we continue to look at the essential of focus, which is really centered around Romans 12 2, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I could not be happier than to have our guest, Dr. Daniel Amen, one of our founding doctors, join us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Why is emotional well being really so tied to this whole area? Emotions drive behavior. And if your emotions are off, your behavior's not right. So if you're sad, if you're anxious, if you're angry, if you're not sleeping, if you can't pay attention, mm -hmm. then that will disrupt the behavior patterns in your life and you're not gonna make the right decisions. So mm -hmm. getting your mind right mm -hmm. is such an important pillar to being healthy overall. Mm -hmm. Because in this whole journey of 40 days to better health, I feel like the the choices that we make, the thoughts that we think are pivotal to the success of it. Well, the, the first thing to do is to really embrace each of the five essentials because it's knowing why you care, uh, being connected to God, so faith is critical. Mm -hmm. Food is the first thing actually I thought of when you were asking me that question mm -hmm. because if you don't eat healthy food throughout the day, say you skip breakfast or you skip lunch, your blood sugar goes low, as your blood sugar goes low, blood flow to your brain goes low, mm -hmm. and then you make a bad decision. Mm -hmm. um, fitness, stronger you are as you age, the less likely you are to get Alzheimer's disease, working out on a regular basis in a smart way boosts blood flow to the brain. They've actually done a study comparing antidepressants with exercise, equally effective, but exercise actually makes you sexier, where antidepressants <laughs> maybe don't. Um, <laughs> And we have so many tools in the focus section. Mm -hmm. um, and then friends, making sure if you're having a, a challenge, call somebody that cares about you. When it comes down purely to the area of focus, I've heard you say a lot about your thoughts. And there's a, a verse in the Old Testament in Proverbs 4.23 that says, guard your thoughts for they run your life. Oh, they're just so critical. A lot of people don't know that every time you have a thought, your brain releases chemicals. Every single time you have a thought, whenever you um, have a hopeful thought, a grateful thought, a loving thought, your brain releases a completely different set of chemicals that wash your body. 
mm -hmm. and happiness and relaxation. Nowhere in our education do people teach us about our thoughts, that mm -hmm. our thoughts in fact are automatic, they just happen, they're based on complex chemical reactions, and they lie. They lie a lot. Don't mm -hmm. believe every stupid thought you have. I knew you were going to say that. Whenever <laughs> you feel sad, mad, nervous, or out of control, mm -hmm. write down your thoughts and then mm -hmm. go, is it true? Can mm -hmm. I absolutely know this thought is true? And you find so many of them lie to you, but left uninvestigated, mm -hmm. they ruin your life. You have taught me that more than anyone else, that it's the uninvestigated thoughts in our life that can cause absolute havoc. So in those moments of stress, anxiety, worry, depression, whether it's that we use our journal, we use an app, we use what have you, to be able to stop and pause and say, is that really true? And then I love to be able to add in, well, what is true that I can totally count on? Well, I can count on scripture being true. I can go, okay, well, what does God say about this moment? One of my very favorite scriptures, mm. because Paul writes, think on whatever is true, true, right, good, lovely, worthy of praise. Let your mind think about these things. When you get your thoughts right, it counteracts depression, anxiety, relationship problems, temper problems, and even your weight. Because I think about that area in Philippians 4, 8, right before that it says, be anxious for nothing, but by everything but prayer and supplication, bring your requests to God. Because life is stressful and we get those kind of thoughts, but it gives us a perfect way to navigate those anxious, stressful moments. Well, like there's actually research that shows prayer and meditation optimizes brain function, where meditation enhances the front part of your brain. Hmm. And the front part of your brain, it's called your prefrontal cortex, is so important because it's the executive part of the brain. It's involved with things like focus and forethought, judgment, impulse control, hmm. organization, planning, empathy, learning from the mistakes that you make. Hmm. And when it's right, you run your life in a thoughtful, focused, loving, hmm. empathic way. Hmm. When it's not right. Your life is a mess. Mm -hmm. Well, that is just um, a lot to chew on because it really is a whole different way about doing our life. It's about embracing what's true, following God's lead in those situations, not being run by our thoughts or feelings. Well, at the Amen Clinics, we have done 80,000 brain scans on people from 93 different countries. Hmm. So I think I've looked at more brains than anyone in the history wow. of the world. And I realize brain health is really six words brain envy, you gotta care. Nobody cares about their brain because you can't see it. You can see the wrinkles in your skin or the fat around your belly and you can do something when you're unhappy because it runs everything you do. So brain envy and then avoid bad. So learn what are those things that hurt mm -hmm. brain function. Now some things are obvious, drugs, alcohol, brain injuries, but a lot of things aren't obvious. As your weight goes up, the actual physical size and function of your brain goes down. You've heard me say that should scare the fat off anyone. Um, <laughs> the fat on your body is toxic. Being hypertensive or having diabetes. Depression is hard on the brain as are negative thoughts. Interesting. And hanging out with negative people tend to be hard on the brain. So <laughs> brain envy, avoid bad, last, do good. And we've talked about some of those things from great nutrition, exercise, prayer, meditation, not believing every stupid thought you have, and focusing on gratitude. And we did this in the Daniel Plan. Every day, write down three things you're grateful for. Focus your mind, because where you bring your attention determines how you feel. Wait, say that again. Where you bring your attention determines how you feel. Right, so if you focus <laughs> on all the things about your husband, that irritates you. <laughs> now I know there are never <laughs> any of those. <laughs> then pretty soon you just get irritated, right? But if you think about, just a bit. <laughs> but if you think about how wonderful he is, how amazing he yeah. is, how smart he is, how loving mm -hmm. he is, yeah. you get this warm, tingly feeling yeah. all over. Where you bring your attention determines how you feel. And so the focus chapter is really meant to get people some mental discipline to start focusing on what they're grateful like for my, in their life. That is my new favorite 
expression that you just said. Where you put your focus determines how you'll feel. So much happens with where we invest our time. You have a saying that um, turn bad days into good data. And it's another one of my favorite sayings because it makes this such a gracious lifestyle approach that a bad day does not mean I'm failed or that I'm a failure. A bad day is just pause for reflection on, wow, I wonder why that happened. So speak to the area of failure and your thoughts on that. When people first come to see me, they're not having good days, but they're not all bad. You know, they're good and bad, good and bad. And then mm -hmm. we intervene, like with the Daniel plan, right. and then they get better. But nobody just gets better. It's this pattern. Right. And, and it's the dips that often discourage people and get them off the program. Mm -hmm. And w what I tell them is expect them. You're not going to be perfect. Nobody is perfect. Expect those bad days. And when they do, learn from them. What happened? I didn't sleep. I didn't eat right. I didn't exercise. I believed every stupid thought I have. That's why journaling is so important. On the Daniel plan, you cannot fail because every failure really is a lesson. So never let failure um, eliminate you. Mm -hmm. Always use it. So an analogy I like is if you're getting ready to ride a bicycle and the chain is not connected, right? And so you're like pedaling, pedaling, nothing's happened. But then all of a sudden it connects and then when it connects, you go. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want. We want to give people all the tools so that it'll connect and, and then they'll go. Great. I love it that you can say there is no failure. It's just about lessons learned and moving forward. And I hope this piece on focus and being transformed by the renewing of your mind is really helpful. It's been profound for us here at Saddleback Church, the Daniel Plan, and we wish the same for you.